Well, thank you this morning, Tim and Molika, for sharing and, and reading for us. Um, good morning. Today, we begin a new sermon series titled, The Crosses We Bear. And alongside of you, I will be praying with you and dialoguing, rethinking things through with you over the next four weeks. Um, I do always remind us periodically about the importance of why we study the scriptures. Why do we spend time each Sunday studying these holy words? Because these holy words are ancient words uh, from thousands and thousands and thousands of years of wisdom that has been passed down from generation to generation to generation. And these words are comforting, but yet they're also challenging. These words offer clarity, but they also offer ambiguity. These words, they are nonviolent words, but are words that alter the way we encounter or we relate to God, to neighbor, and to all creation. So, I hope you understand why we study the scriptures each week, because they're so deep and they're so profound. And yet, there are these absolute words, and yet they're always, ever evolving. But let me start with a story. It was a humid, similar like today, summer day on Chicago's north side. The intensive summer doctoral class at North Park University was full of students quietly awaiting the arrival of their professor. Like any typical first day of class, the students were a bit nervous, unsure of what to expect. They were all new to one another. Then suddenly, the professor walks in, puts his things down, introduces himself, and immediately begins to lecture on the theme of the day. By lunchtime, all students were given a list of local eateries, restaurants, and cafes. They were dismissed, and off we went. I made a quick connection with Mark from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Abe from New York City. We decided to eat Jimmy John's. That was the first time I ever had Jimmy John's. It's such a delicious sub. Subway has nothing on it. <laughs> you see, the guys could not believe, they laughed, because they could not believe I had never had Jimmy John's. Apparently, it was a common sub spot in the Midwest and in the East Coast, but not in the West Coast at that time. So we were able to get to know one another, to hear a bit of one's stories of, of our ministries. No longer were we just in the same class, but now... We were friends. I graduated alongside of Mark. He and I were the first two doctoral students to complete our doctoral projects, and hence the first to complete the rigorous academic checklist. By the end of the cohort, I had multiple meetings, conversations, and meals with not only my friends, but other students, but equally important with my professor. Professor Sung Chan Ra, who holds multiple doctoral degrees, authored dozens of books. He's an academic, a scholar, a, theo a theologian, and a former pastor. But over the span of five years, as we met for these intensive courses in Chicago, in Atlanta, in Los Angeles, I tell you about this story this morning. Because through this academic exper experience, I learned an integral lesson. There is a difference between a person who attends a class and a person who is a student. I'm sure if you would ask Sun Chan Ra about me, he would assert that I'm not just an attender of his class, but indeed a student of his. And this is precisely the discipline that I would like to offer you this morning. I've titled today's sermon, Not Enough Students. 
You see, whenever a story begins with Jesus having to turn around and address the crowds, you know robust instruction is coming forth. And in this occasion, Jesus is compelled to spell out the costs of being a student, the costs of being a disciple. Now, in this passage, one must take Jesus' words seriously, but not literally. Did you hear me? To take Jesus' words seriously, but not literally. Because when Jesus said, whoever comes to me and does not hate father, mother, wife, children, brothers and sisters, and life itself cannot be my disciple, it must be read as hyperbole. One must take the words of Jesus seriously, but not literally. Jesus is not asking us to hate family, to hate our relationships, to hate life itself. Rather, the meaning here in the Greek is to love less or to postpone love. So it is better said this way. Whoever comes to me and does not love less or postpone love for father, mother, wife, children, brothers, and sisters, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. You've got to remember something. The familial relationships in antiquity were vastly different than today. Family was everything in antiquity. It represented social status, financial stability, religious standing. And for Jesus to tell this huge crowd of followers to love less or to postpone love for their nearest and dearest, now you know he wanted them to truly think about the costs of being a disciple and a student of his. And hence, the two stories about the estimation of costs, how much it costs to build a tower, how much it costs to wage a war. And see, right here in this space is where I believe wisdom enters the room this morning. This is where I invite you to open your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit to the divine, to the Holy Spirit who has come to guide us and lead us, counsel us, help us, heal us, has come to speak to us. Because today's wisdom is for those who don't want to be distant followers, but true disciples and students of Jesus. For those who enjoy calculating the costs, for those who seek to gain knowledge before deciding, for those who do the research to be well informed. And here is the wisdom. To be a student of Jesus requires radical obedience. To abandon the values of this world for the values of the gospel. Let me say something about this. To be a student of Jesus in 2022 is not an easy task. To love the gospel more than one's relationships, more than one's life, is not simple. To carry the cross of the gospel takes an encounter with Jesus. You know what Dietrich Bonhoeffer said? The primary theologian of the meaning of the cross, in my opinion, writes in his book, Cost of Discipleship, the cross is laid on every Christian. It begins with the call to abandon the attachments of this world that is dying of the old man, which is the result of an encounter with Christ. There is a cost to being students of Jesus. And some of us may face ridicule and arrest and persecution and betrayal and hatred and criticism. But the true cost is relinquishing the values of this world. There is opposition at work that will deter us from being students of Jesus. Are you hearing me? There is an opposition at work that will deter us from being disciples of Jesus. And those are the values of the world. Relationships, possessions, wealth, life itself. But you would say to me, Pastor, isn't that all good things? 
I think one must admit that some of these things are necessary for life today. Any psychosocial professional would admit that relationships are a vital part of living. They would advocate for good support systems, parents, friends, siblings, a partner, a spouse. Any competent financial advisor would recommend sound strategies to meet your financial goals. Any life coach would help the individual find their life goal, develop a plan, provide motivation, and assist the individual to reach their life goal. See, the point is this. Relationships, financial and personal goals, life itself, it is all good. And Jesus is not denying that. Jesus is not discouraging the pursuit of such good things. He is not impeding you from obtaining such goals. Rather, what Jesus is doing is advising us. Is advising us that these things must not become more valuable than him. More valuable than the gospel. That we cannot use such things to be used as excuses for not being disciples. That they should not get more attention than they should. You know, I guess what I'm submitting to you this morning is this. That true disciples and true students of Jesus, they live by the values of the gospel. And the values of the gospel are countercultural. Think about it. Love your enemies. Overcome evil with good. The last will be first. Pray about everything and don't worry about anything. Stand with those who are oppressed with the underbelly of the world. Do you see how these values are countercultural to our society and world today? And these values cost something. They cost much courage, much boldness, they cost much humility to live into those values today. But sadly, what the church has done has created an abundance of distant followers and very few disciples of Jesus. Are you here? And so today, I want us to begin to understand the importance of becoming a student and not just an attender. Because it is my belief that the world needs right now is more true disciples, more true students, more individuals who are willing to live by the countercultural values of the gospel. Could it be that American Christianity has created a multitude of consumers of good music, consumers of good programming, of good facilities, of good sermons. Christians who bear the name of Jesus, but do not bear the cross of Jesus. Christians who are, instead of following the countercultural values of Jesus, abide by earthly values. They hate their enemies. They overcome evil with evil. They worry about everything and do not pray about anything. They chase after wealth, possessions, and prestige. Stand with the rich, the privileged, and those on top. You see, there are too many care Christians who do not carry not even one cross. Not even uh, one cross, let alone many crosses. They go to church every Sunday, and yet they speak hate against their LGBT neighbor. They sing loud these songs and hymns and yet gossip about their pastor and their church. They say they love Jesus and yet side with the oppressor, the colonizer, with white supremacy, voting to pass laws that oppress women, that oppress immigrants, migrants, and indigenous peoples. And instead of standing in solidarity with the black community, knowing well the history of black bodies, enslaved, lynched, Jim Crow laws implemented on them, murdered, beaten by brutality, by police, 
black lives have never mattered. Way too many Christians bearing the name of Jesus and not the cross. You see, instead of being a person of prayer, trusting in God, they are a person of worry, always anxious. No wonder they cannot bear the cross of giving and tithing. They never pray about it. They give of their financial treasures without generosity. And I ask, where are the generous students of Jesus who don't worry about money? Do you see the difference between the distant followers of Jesus and the true students of Jesus? There is a massive difference. One should not wonder why the American Christian church stands where it stands today. They've created too many distant followers and not enough disciples. Not enough students living out the cult- countercultural values of the gospel. And things must change. Some church, somewhere, should actually attempt to be Jesus' students for the sake of the world. Some group of people, perhaps on an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, should not just attend a class by Jesus, but, not, but seek to be true students of Jesus. I wonder who I'm talking about. You see, Jesus is the embodiment of the values of the gospel did not hide anything, instead told us, consider the cost of being my student. Not only was he willing to carry a cross, but he was willing to die on a cross. Takes away our sins, burdens, mistakes, failures, our half-hearted attempts, and gives us his forgiveness, his grace, his successes, and his righteousness. And resurrected from the dead three days later to give us the apex of reality, the the omega point of history. But what shall we do with such good news? What shall we do with such forgiveness, with such a second chance? You know, tomorrow doesn't have to be like today. We can begin to live like true students of Jesus today, right now. We can begin to live by the values of the gospel today, right now. We don't have to do this on our own. We don't have to do this alone. Remember, the divine who calls you to such beautiful values walks with you day in and day out, meets you right where you are, and will be with you at the end of it all. You don't have to do it alone. And we must know there is an outcome to being the students of Jesus. There is a conclusion, a result, an effect, shall we say. When we relinquish the values of this world for the values of the gospel, we move beyond ourselves and others are included. Wisdom says, if you rethink things, turn to the creator and pray. The divine will heal our land our earth, our cities, our communities, our families, our world. O creator, redeemer, and sustainer who was and who is and who is to come, give us courage, boldness, humility to be your students. Provide us with physical and emotional and mental strength. Fill us with loyalty and commitment to your teachings. Make us not lukewarm, but on fire for you. Make us students of you for the sake of the world and use our lives to heal those around us. Let it be so. Let it be so, let it be so this morning. And all of God's people said, Amen. Let us sing.